Do you ever have a feeling that this unavoidable thing is crashing towards us as photographers with AI, that we're actually going to be rendered unnecessary? When I go out and shoot and I'm, and I'm looking for shadow and I'm seeing light and I'm trying to convey emotions, I'm doing a portrait session and I'm trying to make someone feel beautiful on the streets. I'm trying to capture a slice of life, a piece of people's soul that is timeless. AIs can do a lot of work for us. And this is no more true than the recent videos I've been showing you with the masking AI tools. And yet, to me, these AI tools that they're calling AI aren't actually that intelligent. While it's remarkable that with text input you can get this, the original is actually better. There's something about these AIs that feels less like they're creating and more just like they're taking our creations and remixing them. But let's not fool ourselves. I was there when digital came. I watched the transformation and I watched so many photographers that got complacent thinking they could sell mediocre eight by tens for the rest of their lives. And suddenly it was easy to do that with any digital camera. Then that revolution happened even more when it became easy to get amazing photos with just phones. What I'm gonna show you today is about three different ways to edit an image, not just using the Lightroom AI, which is really powerful, but I'm gonna show you that you don't necessarily need that. Then we're gonna go to Capture One. Maybe we'll even go to Photoshop. Let's take this portrait here. It's not the greatest light. It's not the worst light. It's a nice photo. Really what I wanna do is just show you what we can do with the AI tools. In normal processing, I would go through and I would start with a preset or something. So let's go to something like Portra 400. I showed you guys in my recent video what these new portrait AI tools do in comparison with what we can do in Capture One. We're gonna look at that a little differently today. And I could run the people and build a bunch of masks, but I don't have to because as I showed you the other day, I made a preset to do this, you can too, or if you use my Elegant Speed Masks, you have all these instant masks ready. And one of the most powerful ones for portraits is the new Portrait One AI. I click this mask and it instantly builds about 10 different masks that will completely transform this image. Because you see, we applied the film preset and then I went through and with one click was able to make this image better. The AI is not actually an excuse to not get it right in camera. This may not have been my best photo from this session. And the better input you have, the better output you have. It's also worth noting that Lightroom didn't actually determine how to do this. In fact, Lightroom's auto tools for all this AI talk are still pretty terrible when it comes to processing. Lightroom's AI selection tools, generally speaking, are better than any of us could do with a quick selection. And I can now take this and independently adjust things, for example, like darkening the background a little bit more, like maybe my subject is a little too light still. I can balance everything however I want, even down to the separate parts of the body. What I'm getting at, however, here is that this gives me a lot of control, but I still have to have the creativity. I could do some really cool things with the hair in this, for example, because this image is a little plain. So simply by selecting the hair, which was auto-selected by the AI system that I then applied quickly with the preset in Elegance 4, I could just change white balance. Even though our settings are more limited, in Lightroom for what we apply to a mask slash layer than for example in Capture One or in Photoshop. And without completely turning the model into something she's not, I can enhance this image and make a great looking photo. But let's take another image. I'm gonna do it in Lightroom and then we're gonna go into Capture One. Even without the AI, most of the creativity is coming from here and from our not having a fear of 
pushing a little bit. Here I have this lovely portrait, little bit of strobe light. Again, I would start with a baseline. Maybe just Portra 400. I love Portra 400 and I use it a lot in Filmist, even though there's a lot of other great looks as well. But what happens if I then go to that Portrait 1 AI, which is a combination of all the latest Lightroom AI tools put into a one-click preset with all the settings individually applied. This brings it to the next level. All of these little separations, the way I can separate face, lips, eyes, body, allow me to take this simple Portra 400 raw process and just refine it. The hair is a really powerful thing. And I don't think when we're studying shadow and light, we talk about the hair enough. A lot of times hair gets this sort of blue cast. So now that we have all these auto masks, I can just have the, the hair layer. It's already built for me. And you can see the layer has already been preset as part of the preset that I created to desaturate the hair. But you can see that we're getting rid of that blue cast. I have the mask and I can simply play around and go as crazy or less crazy as I want. But I'm not going for a special effect or changing the hair color so much. I'm looking at kind of the golden glow here in the background and the warmth of the scene, and I'm matching the hair to that scene. And so with just a few clicks, because that hair was selected, I took that beautiful black hair that was kind of had this blue leaning tint, and I made it so it's kind of warm and golden to match the rest of the scene. Now I'm stepping into Capture One with this same photo. I'm going to apply the same Portra 400 look, and I might tweak the adjustments just a little bit. Overall, we have this same process and she's looking good. I don't have the ability here to do what I do with the elegance speed masks. Lightroom AI masks have pretty much left Capture One layers in the dust. But that's kind of my point here that I want to show you. I can take this same image, like adjusting clarity and structure, and I can get a look that has a nice rich softness. I can use the fact that Capture One has a lot of subtle controls. And honestly, I can go right up here and make a mask. I'm going to draw a mask, not use the magic brush, because as I showed you the other day, the magic brush is actually very imprecise. I'm just kind of rough brushing in with a soft edge brush on here. And it doesn't actually take me that long. I can go like this, I can select around her hair, and just like that. Now I'm going to go to these same settings, and I'm just going to add some kind of white balance and tools in, although in Capture One, because on a layer I can use almost all settings, I could even use things like the color tools to add some color into the hair and kind of bring that feel of, hey, we have this kind of golden sun glow. Instead of just desaturating everything, I can go to the color editor and use advanced or basic and simply desaturate only blues while adding in this warmth as well. If you guys are enjoying this, please hit the like and the subscribe button and leave a comment. It helps the algorithm and it helps the channel grow. I could do the same with our model's face to continue softening things up. I could sharpen the eyes. Honestly, if I was doing more and more and more layers, I'd probably go to Photoshop because even though Capture One manual masking is smoother than Lightroom manual masking, a lot of times if I want an advanced edit, I'll just go into Photoshop. We took this same image in Capture One and I took the exact same concept of, hey, I want to emphasize the hair. I'm going to do the edit. I'm going to do a film preset. I'm going to work with the clarity a little bit to make our model look really nice. And the power that we have as photographers, and I think where we will continue to have that going forward, is that we can see and interpret human emotions and look for those little details that allow us to create better. I can come to this image. I'm going to go to Belladonna instead of Filmus this time and just apply Epic 2 to kind of bring out the warmth and brighten up this kind of cheery scene. And I could again do the same tools using the Portrait AI tools. And boom, we've put all of these in and we can now individually adjust any one of these layers, turn them up and down. So why would I need to use another tool? I'm now in Photoshop. I can do something like Alchemist Actions and I could do various creative effects, but I could also go down and do things that are actually more difficult to do in Lightroom, like saying, hey, I like that sun backlit, let's start doing some overlay and some more advanced layers like movable sunlight 
from Alchemist, which builds this kind of transparent sun flare layer. And I could put that back in here and I could resize that layer and just start doing creative things with it to continue adding atmosphere to the image in any way I want. I could now do the Sunfire version of that layer, which is a little more orange, and I might stick that right up here. And I might even do something like movable greens, for example, which would help me enhance the foliage of this same image, and I could start putting it down there and then resize it and move it around to try and get better foliage and look overall in the image. Just adding different overlays and effectively painting these in, which I can then control the opacity of, maybe turn it down so it's a little more subtle, and I'm adding kind of light rays and atmosphere. I could even come in here and do something like the Boca light balls, where I have an action that's built these light balls and that just allow me to add subtle little elements in the image to give more atmosphere. But I think the takeaway here is that whether I use the AI or manually painted in a mask in Capture One, or I went to Photoshop and use actions and moved layers around, there's all these tools at each step, like styles, like presets, like actions. You don't need to be afraid to just paint and move things around and be creative. You don't need an AI to do that for you. In the end, all these emotional elements of our image can come from here. We don't want the AI creating the whole image for us because what you end up with is something that doesn't have that soul. It has a sort of soullessness to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna put a link here to my Elegance Speed Mask. If you are a Lightroom user, use the best tools you have available. But don't think that your photos are defined by what tool you have right now or by what tool you prefer for whatever reason. They're all just tools and you're the creator. We'll see you next time. Keep shooting.